Yep, he done found him some bees in a tree. What I think we're going to do here is, we're actually, uh, I'll, I'll step back here in a second to show you the tree. But they said that uh, just a few days ago, they had a mass ball of bees around here. Now I'm in uh, North Alabama in Atala, and that little piece of white comb right there is not, I'm sure, not the only piece I got going on in there. But I'm, uh, I'm going to do a little bit more looking into this, but we may have just found our forest abscon tree to do a little bit with today. Uh, anyway, a little short video. Let's see. How about that? There is a lot of bees in here. A lot of bees. Alright. Updates will be here soon. Howdy folks. It is Thursday, March 17th, 2016. And I got a call today from a friend of mine that works with the city and said that his sister ended up having some bees flying around the house a few days ago. Uh, asked me if I'd come over and check it out. So I got over here and they showed me the tree. And... They actually, they had bees in this tree last year, but they didn't see anything towards fall, and they, about three days ago, two, three days ago, they had a lot of big cloud of bees flying around. So, um, turned around and, and I came over earlier today, got on a ladder, right here is the entrance hole, and you can actually look down in it, and there's a gob of bees. There's one or two pieces of brand new fresh white comb in there. I could reach in and actually pull one up. Uh, wasn't no bigger than a, a small biscuit. So there's another piece to the right of it. There wasn't any uh, honey or nectar put in it. So I'd, I wanted to leave that alone and be real careful with it to keep the bees up towards the top. But anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to try uh, what I have been calling a forced abscond. Uh, we understand that an abscond is when there's something that has happened in the bees' home and they pretty much leave uh, various reasons well um, in beekeeping if you thought about it today somebody else probably thought about it yesterday well over the last couple of years I've been doing this whenever I have an opportunity uh, to do a bee tree and been wanting to make a video on them some of them just hadn't hadn't been real good for making videos on but this one I believe is going to be real good to share with you to give you a basic idea when, when I look at my tree I'm wanting to understand where the bees are at Sometimes what I'll do is I'll drill a hole low, entrance hole, and then up high to see where the top and the bottom of the hive is. That's the most important thing, is knowing where the top is and where your bottom is. Because we're wanting to force them back out the original hole, obviously, that they come in and out of. But we don't want to give them, if the, if the entrance hole is, below, is right in the middle of the, the, the hive, then we have that opportunity to where they... Um, they can have a place to run and we don't want to give them a place to run we want them coming back out the entrance hole so sometimes you may have to smoke above sometimes back below working it back and forth to force them to come out to, to get out of the cavity of the tree I've had very good success with this I will start out and I'll be using uh, uh, just regular smoker uh, sometimes I actually put one spray of honey bee gone in the top so that it ha helps to vaporize it and I don't squirt it in the tree because once you squirt it in something you can't undo that. So if I ever going to use it, I'm going to put it in my smoker, and then I will turn around and try to run them out that way. But what we're looking at doing right now is, is I've, I've turned around, and right here, I uh, don't know if you can see it or not, but right here is the hole that I drilled, and this is pretty much the the, the lower side of where the uh, the cavity of the tree is. I came around it on the side. It uh, the cavity doesn't go deep into the tree, so. In this circumstance, the way they've got it set up, the sad part is, is that this opening is is big enough to where every time it rains, it's going to rain in on top of them. They, this this hive actually chose a bad place to be, which may be the reason why the last batch of bees didn't make it, because of, of where it's at and and the elements that would get down in there, and they probably have absconded back in the past. But we're in the beginning of uh, of our flow. Uh, obviously swarm season's picked up a little bit on something around here and uh, we've had a great winter really mild temperatures a little bit wet but it goes along with the story uh, what we're fixing to do is we're fixing to turn around and get to it I've already drilled my hole and uh, I've checked my other sides I don't have much going in through the top so 
and the biggest cluster of the bees is right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our smoke and we're going to try to get the march going. We're going to put the smoke to them and really want to drive them out. And then once I've got, got them marching out, coming out of the hole, then I'm going to sit there and I'm going to watch for the queen. I may actually, I've got it with me, we may vacuum some, but all I'm doing right now is trying to run the bees up and out and try to get that queen to follow with. Because once they start marching out, she should follow. So, wish me luck. Here we go. Hope you enjoy the video. And I'm going to try to get some of these branches and stuff out of the way while we're at it. So, thanks for checking out my video. Be right back. All right, folks, here's the up and close. Check this out. All right, we started with the smoke. Now we got them running up and out. All right, they're leaving what little bit of comb was in there. Now I just got to do is keep them going. Just got to keep them going. And I got to find that queen. She's going to be marching out of here in a minute. And when I find her, we're going to cage her. And then uh, we'll go to step two and we'll actually really put the, put the juice to it, get them all out of here, and uh, make it where they don't want to come back in here. But we've got a 10 frame box that is uh, set up real good right now. Uh, drawn comb ready for him, so not a problem. We're just watching for our queen to come out. What do you think about it, Sadie? Check this out, girlfriend. I'm down here. Look at all these bees. I know, I've been watching. See me? Don't even try to stain you or nothing? No. You got one on your shoulder. <laughs> Oh my gosh. They're in a good mood today. Huh? They're in a good mood today. Yes, ma'am. They're in a good mood. <laughs> Come on, Sadie. Come on, baby.
Beatty. folks nice fat Italian nice fat Italian oh, wow. let me see here I'll have a picture or two probably to put on there let me move around over here let's see what we got here let's let that focus a little bit focus there it is there you go that's a forced apps gone folks oh my god this one over here right here right there mm -hmm. she's a queen bee so are they usually aggressive not really I, they are really actually not aggressive and now if you do something to bother them making a lot of you know beating on the tree spraying water on them different things they could in the when there's not nectar flow going on, they could be a little cranky. But the bees we have around here, they tend to, they're actually a very social insect. Oh. They are social. What kind of, what species are they? These are just honeybees, just plain old honeybees. Not like the black and yellow ones are bumblebees. Uh-huh. Uh, these are just a honeybee. They'll make honey. Mm -hmm. So. Are I've there got any a, honey up there? No. It, I'd have to cut the tree. If there was, I'd have to cut the tree open to get to it. But there's, they actually, they've only got two little, three little pieces of comb the size of a biscuit. They ain't got mm. nothing in there. Huh? Was those the bees you was hoping they would? Uh, the a swarm? Yes, yeah. because it because it, it worked this job out real easy. Okay. Glad you were
All right, I don't know if you can see it. There's the first box. Where's the second box? Well, we're gonna we're gonna do something different, baby. So hold on. All righty, folks. Uh, we vacuumed up about two pounds of bees, the biggest bulk of them, and uh, you already saw my queen. We're gonna put her in here, and then I'm actually gonna take and I'm gonna dump the bees on there so that I can get them to, to giving out the uh, Nazanoff scent so to let the other ones know where she's at. But I'm gonna go back in here uh, as soon as I get this set up and get them in there, and then I'm gonna take and I'm actually gonna uh, put my honeybee gone in there make that cavity to where they want completely out of it. They're just going to disorient them. They're going to smell the queen being in here, or the uh, other bees letting everybody know that this is home now. And they'll they'll go flying around. There'll be bees everywhere. It's going to be great. And then later on tonight, uh, they will have acclimated to this box, following her, and I'll come back after dark and pick them up. And I would probably say this is a little bit harder of a swarm catch than, uh, than most, you know, shake the tree things. But... Uh, Look at this, we've been here for probably 30, 45 minutes at the most, and we got all we need. We got our queen. So I'll give you a few minutes, just watch what I'm doing here, and uh, hope you enjoy it. Was it hard to get the queen bee out? Nope. Yes. Nope, she, she just walked out on her own. <laughs> I just made it to where this, this is the equivalence of me. Starting right here at the end of the house, breaking that window and throwing a skunk in that back bedroom. Oh. All right, you're going to start heading towards the other side of the house. Well, if I go to this window over here and the other window over there and I throw a skunk in, I'm eventually going to run you out the door. And that's basically what I did with the smoke and the honey be gone, was I turn around and I come underneath them because there was not really anywhere they wanted to run up. But based on how the tree was set up, you know, is what nature did, plus where the entrance was, I could just about say that I was going to run them up and out, and I did. Mm. About estimate of how many bees are in there. Okay. I'm going to say there's probably about four pounds of bees here. And, and in four pounds of bees, there's 3,500 bees per pound. So you're what? Seven, fourteen thousand 14,000 bees roughly? Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Well, hello. That's a lot of bees. That's a lot of bees. Mm -hmm. Now, Chris said he was going to call you the other night, uh, get a hold of you, see if you wounded him or not. Yeah, he got me today. <laughs> yep, he got with me today. So, here we go. I'm going to get her locked in right here because I don't have a rubber band. Do you need a rubber band? No, we we're got good. Some in there. We're good right here. This will help hold that in there, just like that. My husband said, you're crazy. I said, <laughs> he said, I, I would come out there, but I'm allergic to him. <laughs> no, my husband. See, now they're smelling the, the comb that I brought. Mm -hmm. They're smelling their queen, and they're okay with this. They're saying, hey, well, hey, man, we just upgraded from a hole in the wall to the Taj Mahal. Uh -huh. They're going to be happy bees in this one.
I don't know if you can see that or not, but there they go. So basically I've now created somewhat of a swarm. They just have to figure out where they want to go. And obviously you've seen the hive setup I got down there on the ground. Well, all we're doing is waiting for them to get out of there, take flight, realize where the queen's at, and go to her. So, back her up a little bit. Well, folks, there it is. Forced yap sconed. <laughs> How about it? Uh, well, once again, we, uh, we drilled our hole. We located the... We, we actually, I took the camera when I started, went down into it to look around, realized that this was uh, confirmed that just a couple days ago they moved in. And uh, we only had one or two pieces of comb. We uh, went ahead and went and drilled down well enough below them into the hollow where we could run the smoke up and uh, force them back out the entrance. Uh, work like a charm. I'm, I'm real happy with the way it, it went. Um, so we got them, uh, got them all run out. We found the queen and got her cage. She's in there. Um, went ahead and I took my honeybee gone uh, for the last final oomph to get them out. Sprayed it on top of the uh, pine straw in the smoker. I, now once I had her out and I knew I could control the bees, then I put a little bit actually into the hole. I sprayed some up on the tree after I smoked them to keep them from coming back on there to try to sway them from wanting to go back to it. The um, last thing that we did was we're taking some of our swarm commander and we spray it on the little piece of paper, set it up here, and it just helps to get that, that nasonoff smell going. The reason why is, is all the wind, the wind's in my face and it's blowing backwards. So, there, there's still a pretty good bit of bees flying around. I want to make sure that they get the message, hey, come down here, not back up there. And I'm going to take and I'm going to fill a little bit up that, uh, the hole up there so that we can keep them from going back down in there uh, on top of using the honeybee gone. So, uh, there it is. Um, we'll say every bit of four pounds of bees. They're on nine frames of drawn comb right now, and flow's already started. So. We're going to get them home. I've actually got one frame in there that's still got a pretty good bit of honey on there, so we don't even have to do anything worry about feeding them. But we're going to take the bees. We're going to do a mic check on them, see how they're doing, and pretty much set them up in the apiary, get them going. I mean, I appreciate you checking out my video. You can, um, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, that way you can get updates for when I upload new videos. And I uh, want you to check out my good friend JP the Bee Man. Uh, he's got a, a lot of these videos that he does uh, honeybee removals down in New Orleans. And uh, check him out. Great guy, good friend. And I also want you to check out uh, Sha Wee. Uh, he's on uh, Facebook. Uh, you can look him up at Sha Wee Beekeeper of the Swamp. Um, makes some really killer, really killer feral queens. So if you're looking for some good southern feral genetic queens, I want you to check out Sha Wee. Um, Really, really like the, the queens that he puts out. So, anyway, that's about it for the uh, for the throwing the names out there. Uh, other than then, check out swarmcommander.com <laughs> and uh, honeybee uh, honeybeegone.com. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. I did. It was a lot of fun. Got my little girl with me today. She's she's too shy. I don't want to get on camera. Unless you want to come over and say hey. You want to come stick your head on the camera? Yeah. Come on, come say hey. Yeah. Just watch for bees. Put that down, please. Come here. Come on. Come right here with me. Are you scared? Yeah. You gotta get right here so they can see you on camera. No. Come on. You can do it. Are you? No, you're not. You see them little bees stuck their butt up? How about that? All right. Well, guys, thanks again. Hope you had a wonderful time and, and enjoyed the video. We're, uh, we're getting to play with some bees, and that's always a good day. Check you later. What are you doing? Are you messing with the bees? Uh-huh. What are you going to name them? Babies. Babies? Babies?
Is that what you're going to name them? Babies? Sticky. All right. Say goodbye, America. Bye. Really? That's all you got? All right. What do you want to name this one? Sadie catches bees out of a tree? Shit. Huh? Yeah. Sadie's bees? No? Okay, fine. Say bye. Bye, America. Bye. Bye, America. Bye. Say it nice or we can't get off the video. Bye. Wave at him. Say bye, America. Say bye, JP. Bye, shall we? Daddy, shall we? There you go. Hey gang, Yappy again, a little follow up. So here's the hive that we force absconded from the tree that swarmed into it about three days ago. And uh, once again, really happy with the way everything turned out. It was a lot easier than an established colony in a tree. Uh, I know I'm somewhere after the end of this video, I'm gonna get some comments about that. And I still um, use the same principles when I'm trying to get one that's out of a tree that's already been established. You just have to be above them, below them, hope there's no little channels running through the tree in the, in the, in the core that they can hide in, and just uh, smoke them out and take your time doing it. There's, you know, always a, a way to add a little, take a little way, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can even almost get to a point where you can put a cone over it like a trap out cone, and that way if uh, things don't go as well as what you want to with trying to smoke them out, then uh, your cone's already set up and you can do a trap out and that's a whole nother subject but let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at them so there's our bees and uh, we did real good here real good I'm liking it Came one, but they're all. I've, I've given them everything in here is drawn out foundation, uh, except for this one, obviously. But uh, I already had a bunch of drawn. Look at this, they're already getting to work. They're liking that. Let me set you guys over here. So, not too bad. Not too bad. Hello, ladies. So, nice. All right, remember that? There's our queen. They're tending to her just like they should be. These girls are getting to work. And what they're doing, who, sister? Don't squash anybody. Don't squash anything. Okay. All right, what they're doing is they're getting these cells ready so that mama in a couple of days can get to laying and uh, getting everything cleaned up so awesome 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 work but there you go look at all them bees so that was it that's the uh, little follow up I know folks like to like to get back in here and uh, see how they they got set up once we once we get into the yard here's my this is what we call the temporary apiary this is a little six acre spot that I keep and uh, this is the nursery this was a hive that we removed two Saturdays ago and we let them get established and we will do some mite counts on them uh, here before too much longer we'll get some mite counts going on them and the reason I do that is because I want to know what kind of hygienics they have before they get to a main apiary with the rest of my bees. I do that because what is the point to what is the point in, if this hive was actually really bad hygienically and full of varroa mites why would I want to bring these into my yard where I manage monitor and keep up with varroa counts so that I know whether they are hygienic or not. Um, 
so I don't, I'm, I'm reducing the exposure possibilities to uh, spread the varroa. So once I get a yard uh, with very minimal to almost no varroa in it, I don't bring that infected hives into my yard so that it can then re uh, infest my established colonies that I have already and therefore I'm losing less bees that way and uh, I can create something that I can monitor and watch hygienics on and do real well with. But anyway, there it is guys. That's uh, Yappy's little extra bit. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the video and thank you for again one more time for watching my videos and we'll catch you somewhere out on the web. See you bye.